Jason Carroll, it's my pleasure to introduce Jason Carroll. Jason um, is from Kentucky and I had the pleasure of actually meeting Jason and seeing Jason present with his colleague Jason Gibson in uh, Closing the Gap at the end of last year. And Jason is a, an, inc an, inc uh, an instructive and assistive technology consultant, also a consultant around the uh, universal design for learning, not only from the state of Kentucky but throughout the US. Jason has a particular interest in and actually how we take these shiny objects that we have, this technology, and actually the implementation of those objects in our, in our programs in our classrooms. Jason gets, gets involved in a number of research programs. He's also currently teaching at university level, at a master's level at university as well. So we're very fortunate to have Jason with us here at our conference. Jason also has another bow to his string, another string to his bow, it's a long night. I was actually up, I'm the tour manager for the bands on uh, tomorrow and uh, they, were, they were rehearsing to very late last night. Um, anyway, it's a long story which I'll explain tomorrow, but Jason has an additional string to his bow. He's also taken up surfing, and he is a gnarly dude. He's, he's been getting barreled on the Gold, Gold Coast, and he looks, to, he looks to forward to coming back and getting barreled more often in Australia. So, with that, can I introduce you to Jason Carroll? <coughs> Thank you, Greg. Uh -huh. All right, is this on? Good morning. So, uh, thank you, Greg. That was, uh, it's always good to be introduced right after we talk about the toilet problems. So, uh, that put me right in line for that. And uh, I would like to just start by saying that sometimes I feel like I live in conferences. Um, we have these things uh, quite a bit in the States. I've never seen a conference like this. This is by far the best conference I've attended. Uh, everywhere from the keynote to the quality of the sessions to the staff of Spectronics. So, uh, you know, since we have some Spectronics members in here, maybe we can start by just saying what a great uh, conference we have. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, you guys came to this session. That's good. We're going to talk about uh, a couple of really important things. One of those being assistive technology. You guys probably know a little about that. If not, there is a vendor hall that they'll be happy to tell you all about it. And then uh, there's another piece to that, and that's the strategies that you use along with assistive technology. Sometimes that's the part that we forget. So today we're going to kind of combine these two and, uh, and, and talk to a through a few ways that, uh, that you can be successful with that. So before we do that, I imagine that 99.9% .9 of you have no idea who I am. So uh, that's okay. I, uh, I live in the States. And I specifically live in the state of Kentucky. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the layout of the states or anything like that. Um, if you saw my clock earlier, you can see that I'm about 14 hours off on my time zone. Actually, it was uh, yesterday was my birthday here, but it's my birthday there today. So I keep getting all these messages and things like that. It's, it's just a crazy thing. A two-day long birthday is nice. So... Um, so just a little bit of background, so you know how I got to, uh, to be standing here in front of you. I, uh, Kentucky, I'll uh, pop a map up. That's Kentucky. So if you guys have heard of Kentucky, you probably think, um, you know, horse racing, maybe, maybe things like that. I'm from a small town in eastern Kentucky. And when I say small town, I mean it's very small. Uh, the population would be under 2,000 people. Um, and, you know, basically... The primary industry there, it's, uh, I don't know if you know much about Eastern Kentucky and, and some of the movies you may see, it's, uh, the primary industry there is probably meth, so I don't know if that, uh, <laughs> if that resonates or not. It's, it's not really the place you'd want to raise your kid at. And uh, so I had the pleasure of, of you know, making it through uh, 12 years of school there. And when I graduated, we probably had, uh, let's say, in a graduating class, we had around 100 students. And I was lucky enough to, uh, to, to graduate second in the class. So I thought I was something, right? So I graduated second in the class out of, uh, out of this place in eastern Kentucky. And um, there was probably about 15 kids that went to college from the class, maybe 15 of us. And there's probably maybe four that actually finished college and, and went on to pursue from there. But I'll never forget the very first day uh, when I walked onto the college campus, we meet with these academic advisors and they, they tell us what our schedule is and what we want to be when we grow up and all those kind of things. And so I sat down. And uh, I was looking at my, my outline. And you know, they put numbers in front of classes. Like, uh, you have sociology 101 and biology 141 and things like this. So I had all these classes lined up, and they all started with zero. 
So I had like algebra 091 and algebra 093 and all these classes. Do you guys know what that means? That's a remedial class. You don't get credit for it. <laughs> right? So I said, oh, you must have misunderstood because I graduated second in my class. <laughs> I have no need for remedial classes. And she looked at me and she said, honey, anyone that comes from the school that you came from has to take all the remedial classes. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. It's, it's funny now, right? <laughs> but I was given a label, right? Now, does that sound familiar at all? I was given a label.